All right, guys. Welcome to your first oh, you session. Picture. All right. I was gonna show y'all a picture that I found to see what y'all think of it. Give me just a second. Don't put it oh, in the. Oh, uh, we're starting there. Jenkins. Jenkins talking. Put it in the uh, Teamspeak chat. Teamspeak. Please. Yeah, just drop all links on Teamspeak. Did you clear the chat? Because I still don't see it. You yeah, it, it, it's it local. See. It's local. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So, um... You guys are going to be in the city or town of Tombstone. Oh, actually, damn it, Goldfish, I had a question for you before we started, so I guess I have to ask it now. Are you a, a prostitute or a dancing girl? Not to put you on the spot. Mm. I hadn't really thought about it. I, was, I just assumed the escort was a prostitute. Okay. Well, She's very I, I went with prostitute. And you know, from... sometimes the bartender type thing, you know? Like... <laughs> okay. Because you gotta have alcohol. Well, since, since we're talking about characters, let's go ahead and uh, formally introduce our characters. And we'll start with Gwen, since we already kind of touched on her. No window window. Okay. Okay, well, I'm Gwen, I'm a prostitute, and eventually my computer will work, um, but she hails from Arkansas, and that's about as far as I got so far with well, her. Well, alright, that there's, works. There's nothing really much about her. She's young and she's a prostitute. I mean, you know, like, come on now. Did you work out what was the link between you and Mad Dog? I think we Being discussed that he I'm had here, some kind Sorry. of um, some kind of mission that I was involved on or something. Isn't that what he said last time? I don't. Sorry, I don't I'm, I'm sure Mad Dog will be able to fill us in more. Yeah. Okay, <sighs> Mad Dog will fill us in more when it's his turn when he stops interrupting people. Um, I wasn't. Yeah, she was speaking. Anyway, uh, who's next? All right. Um, let's go with uh, Mad Dog. But filling in backstories, pretty much. Just, just introduce yeah. yourself. No, oh, well, I'm old Mad Dog Willis. I'm not doing that. Yeah, I'm Mad Dog Willis. People like to call me a drifter because, well, as the name implies, I like to go around and just take odd jobs. Usually, don't stay in one place for too long. But other than that, oh, sorry, um, Mad Dog. I'm sure you say other than that. I mean, what else? The drifting job, I usually just pick up, you know, they're not so reputable ones, and I kind of picked up the skills for a little bit of shooting and fighting. But that doesn't matter. Hey, hey, thanks for the host, Otter Gaming, my friend. Yeah, this new guy dies. <laughs> he disconnected? I was going to do him next. He lost Lewis, connection. Why? Oh, well, uh, connection. Roke, you got you got your character enough ready to talk about it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, go ahead and introduce yourself, even though <laughs> new guy won't be able. To, he'll he'll get the gist. Yeah. Uh, well, we uh, as as fate would have it, I've already met our uh, well anointed friend over there, and I'm gonna motion my hands. Oh, over you guys to aren't Lewis. in character. Oh, we're not. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, never mind then. <laughs> uh. Getting into it already. Uh, no. First campaign. Uh, first campaign. Yeah, there you go. Uh, or first session, I should say. So, my character's got an actual name, but the nickname he likes to go by is Decker. And this is, of course, expressed by his constant carrying around and playing of card games. Uh, he tries to be well-dressed, but he spent a little bit too much time on the road, and you can see it a little bit in his uh, suit jacket and his pants. Um, he's coming out of Colorado, as fate would have it. And uh, if you're playing, if you're playing a game with him, you guys better be splitting the pot because he's most likely going to be walking away with it. Awesome. All right. And last, I Lewis, some fun or is it Luis? It's Lewis. Okay. 
And uh, let's hope I do not deceive the ring. But basically, Louis uh, comes from Louisiana. He grew up with recurring nightmares and weird dreams that was associated to the fact that he was a child with a wild imagination. But in truth, as he grew up, he discovered that he could see things that people could not, uh, not actually see them but like you know when you turn your head and there's some ki some kind of illusion on the corner of your eyes he kept seeing that and so on and so forth the more he focused on it the clearer it would get but he could never figure out what that was uh, eventually he met a man uh, what they called down there a witch doctor which is basically shenanigans the people unless you're a believer that uh, they could contact spirits and do weird stuff but obviously all those rumors are usually untrue most of them are scammers that just want your money and then they do some voodoo voodoo shit and then you start believing and it works so uh, but to Lewis when he met that man the man described what Lewis was living uh, pretty accurately, so Lewis got interested, learned the trade of how to become a witch doctor, and um, uh, he basically embraced the kind of religion that goes around being a witch doctor, to the point where he keeps a constant, or almost constant, um, painted skull on his face. Uh, that's a quirk of his. You will rarely see him without it, unless he fell in the water or something, and he doesn't have time to paint it back on, but uh, aside from that... He does it every day. Uh, then, uh, yeah, so he started traveling, uh, started learning the trade in Louisiana, got pretty good at it, uh, decided to make money out of it because when you have a talent, why not put it to profit? So uh, he decided to become kind of a carnival uh, type dude that would follow the circuses and the show and stuff like that and do those little tricks, you know, with the tables where three, you have three glasses and a little nut and then you scam people because the nut is n on, under no... No, none of these glasses and then he would also use his own talents in uh, the the practice of voodooism to like make flames appear and uh, use his little uh, weirdness or mystery around him to like make people believe that he could like curse them if he didn't if they didn't give him money or stuff like that like not outright evil but not outright nice either and due to that fact he decided to also re redempt himself by uh, using his trait to heal people. He does not use his uh, healing powers on people that do not believe him, like he won't force it on someone. He only offers it when people need it. Hey, you're healed. You want me to try my little stuff? And if they say yes, he exchanged money for it, and bam, they're healed. And yeah, so he left Louisiana, uh, headed toward Tombstone, simply because that's where his latest traveling group uh, led him. Actually... I will actually tell you about your head at two tombstone. Perfect. Are you from New Orleans? You can assume so, yes. Okay. So, tombstone. Um, oops, that, not that. <laughs> tombstone. Here's the town of Tombstone. Oh, and uh, let's get our... Uh, music going. So, as it stands, only one of you is a resident of Tombstone at this juncture, and that would be, of course, Gwen. Uh, Gwen, you are a soil dove of the cat house, the Parisian, which is number 25 on the map. I'm pinging it. The Parisian is... is what? I said, of course the prostitute has a home. Right. Well, anyway, the Parisian is a uh, high-class joint. Like, top-of-the-line gals, if you will. It, it, it's on a row... It's on a street row that's all saloons and, and whorehouses. And um, the Parisian is considered, you know, the, the classy establishment among the bunch. At the end... Uh, at the end of Allen Street, right at the corner of 5th Street there is the uh, the very famous Oriental um, Saloon, which is the big time saloon in the city. So, you, um, town. So you've got, you've got the, the Oriental and the Parisian as like the two largest uh, entertainment places that are open like pretty much all the time. And then of course there, there are a couple of theaters like the, uh, the Shelflin Theater Hall over there. That, you know, when that when they're playing shows, that that's usually draws in the biggest crowd. Uh, 
Um, anyway, so she's the only resident, and um, Lewis, you were getting fixing to leave New Orleans to you know work your trade somewhere else. It's always good to stay mobile in your line of work. Yes. And just as you were getting ready to board a train, there was a letter for you, and you picked it up, and it was from a fellow voodoo priest uh, by the name of Jeremiah Seek. And you and him, um, you and him, uh, like, you know, you guys worked work the trade in the past, so he, he knows yep. your abilities, you know of his abilities, and every now and then you guys deal with some bad mojo. You know, you, 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 you do battle with the, the, the evil Loa and their, their minions. Um, not on any real large scale, obviously, because you guys are just starting out in, in the Wild West. Mostly yep. what you do is, like, you know, like air quotes, like cleansing an area of bad spirits. Obviously, you've never fought in the physical world yet. You don't even know that's a thing. You have your suspicions, though, and so does Jeremiah. Yeah. So Jeremiah Seek sent you a letter, and he said, you know, he's basically to sum up, he said, Lewis, there's some weird shit going on in Tombstone, and I could use some backup. I think this is the real deal. And he, like, underlined the real deal. And he says, jump a train uh, as fast as you can, and when you get here, I I've, already, I've, I've already paid for your fare. So just show up to the, uh, the rail station and give him your name, and they should refund you for your trip. That, that, I mean, that's how badly he wants you to come, basically. So, of course, you're like, well, this sounds important, so you, you hop the train. Obviously. Now, what's all this about? Well, um, Gwen, since you're actually in the town, and, you know, uh, Lewis is on his way, there have been some strange going-ons in the last two weeks. There have been three disappearances in the past two weeks, and they've all either occurred within or involved your cat house, the Parisian. First, a drifter from New Orleans paid for a night with a soiled dove working at the Parisian named Missy Kate. And that drifter was never seen again, and the next day, Missy Kate's co-workers, including yourself, noted that they had been acting oddly. And and even the, the, the day of and ever since the Drifter Vantage. So, obviously, some suspicion was cast on Missy Kate, but uh, there was no real reason to see why a, a, you know, a, a lady of the evening would harm a customer. Regardless, the Marshal questioned her, and that night, the night after the Marshal questioned her, uh, she was paid for... Uh, she, she was um, hired, if you will, by a local shopkeeper's son, Abraham Shine. I'm sorry, not Abraham. Aaron Shine. And, um, the next morning, Aaron Shine, uh, went, well, he, he was seen later that night arriving at his, at his family homes, but Missy Kate was nowhere to be found the next morning. And when his parents went to go check on Mr. Aaron Shine, he too had vanished. Now, to make matters worse for you, Missy Kate is actually a longtime friend of yours. You both arrived from Arkansas together uh, because you got a lucrative contract to work for the Parisian, who are always looking for uh, the best in your trade. And as you are a gal of remarkable beauty, any, any cat house would want to have you employed because that's definitely going to rake in the business. So you and Missy Kate were basically recruited across state lines and paid to they paid you to come to Tombstone and come work at the Parisian. So you came with Missy Kate. Now, at the time when you arrived in Tombstone, Missy Kate had a daughter named Caroline, and she was suffering from consumption. And the long trip down to Tombstone uh, just kind of made her condition go from bad to deadly. And within a, a few weeks after your arrival, she passed away. And that was about a year ago. So obviously... I mean, obviously, Missy Kate is torn up by the whole losing her daughter, but at this point, you know, she's kind of come to terms. Um, however, the day Missy Kate started acting funny, um, you had... She told you that she was going to go visit her daughter's grave, 
And when she returned from the graveyard, which was a, which is a, like a, a few miles outside of town, uh, she was starting. To, she was just acting very distant, and she didn't seem to really like know you. For, uh, like you know, she didn't recognize you as your as her old friends. She just kind of treated you with the same regard she would treat any of her other coworkers. And at first, you just thought maybe visiting her daughter's grave shook her up a bit. But when uh, but when the the drifter disappeared. Um, obviously that, uh, that raised some alarms for you. And now, she's missing. Now, the other two of you... Yes. Uh, you're going with the name Decker? Yeah. Okay. Well, first, uh, Mad Dog. You yep. are, you know, you're, you're commonly traveling. You're a drifter. And every drifter at some point ends up in Tombstone. And, uh... Oh, just, no. It just so happens that you are in Tombstone. Now, you and, uh, Gwen have some history. Have you guys hashed out the details of that history? Uh, if I remember, we pretty much went with your example of it. Okay. So, um, you were hired to protect the stagecoach that she was on. Yeah, yeah. You guys got ambushed by some ruffians, and in the firefight that ensued, uh, Gwen actually took some of them out, proving that she was actually a decent shot, which surprised you, because she was such a beautiful and fair lady, and you weren't expecting her to be able to sling iron. So... That useless. I, is Mad Dog someone who partakes in female company? Of the paid variety. Well, Mad Dog is a bit of a loner. And he, he likes women, but he's not too much for the prostitute variety. Okay. He prefers men. Yeah, sure. Oh, there's Shut men up. prostitutes. <laughs> uh, I don't think in the Wild West there was a slew of male prostitutes. Uh, if you, if you were homosexual back then, you kept it on the DL. Um, that's what I'm saying. Doing... That's why you don't hear about them. But they 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 existed. So somebody came out and said, like, "Fuck, I'm in the butt. Hang on." Wow. Such class. But uh, anyway. All right. So, Gwen, you're looking around town for someone to help you because you know the local laws next to useless. And um, that's when you learn that. Um, Mad Dog Willis is in town, and so one day he's visiting one of the, one of the uh, saloons. Let's say the Golden Eagle Brewery, which is across the street from the Oriental. So he was he was spending some of his hard-earned cash on that amber liquid, and uh, you approached him, and of course you guys had history, and you you brought him up to speed on the whole disappearings, and naturally, looking for work and hoping that there would be some pay involved, Mad Dog was like, yeah, sure, I'll look into it as long as, you know, as long as it's it's going to be profitable for me. Yeah, you know? Unless he finds another other work, and, and then he's, he feels like out of the corner, it kind of says it's hard to help you. But for now, you know, he's like, yeah, I'll help you for now, and then we'll see what happens. Um, oh, Jake, you played that right. And now, um... Lewis, oh, actually, first let's talk about Decker. Decker, I don't really have anything for you, so, um, why are you in Tombstone? I'm in Tombstone because due to some, uh, personal reasons and a slight mishap during a game that I was supposed to win, I, uh, had to leave my dwellings in Colorado. Things were getting too hot down there and the law was not going to protect me. So I've made my way down to Tombstone in the hopes of a fresh start and to ideally face my past when it's better on my terms. Alright. Going at a new life. So you would be, in, you, you'd probably be at one of the saloons making some money. Oh, most definitely. I'd either be playing some card trick, shuffle to find the Joker outside, or if there was a game inside, I'd be playing the game. Alright. Got $100 to my name. If if you were to say over here a conversation between Gwen and Mad Dog, would that perk your interest? 
some really dirty street dude talking to a hooker and he's not interested in prostitutes, yeah, that'd be kind of weird because most of them don't talk to him to talk to him. <laughs> no, I gotta be dirty, huh? No, oh, well, man, come on now. There ain't no showers on the road. <laughs> you don't know that. Well, I, well. It's not like you're okay. a Wiley uh, cooler. Oh, but I, I guess what I mean to say Lewis, is that you the, can have the, a mini shower. The, oh, the, but the attitude of your conversation would be much different than all the other ones going around. It wouldn't be eye batting. It'd be like Business. you're actually talking to her and you care about what she's saying. Yeah, that's weird. You're listening. <laughs> you're looking at her lips for her eyes, not anything else. Yeah, that, that just that would stand out like a sore thumb. Wait so you, a minute. A man actually talking to a woman? Right. So you overheard their conversation about the the, the disappearances around the Parisian, and um. At first, you're just gonna kind of like interesting, you know. You're not gonna approach them, and then so enter Lewis. Lewis, you come in on the Bayou Vermilion. Uh, turns out your boy Jeremiah left behind the money just like he said he would, so your ticket was paid for, or reimbursed, I should mm -hmm. say. And the first thing you're gonna do is uh, go looking for him. So go ahead and make a streetwise check. Oh dear lord. That hey was guys, the one dead. skill that I was like, yeah, I don't think I'll need it. <laughs> All right. I yep. So you're you're uh you come up dry. So you decide to well, actually, I don't know. What do you decide? You you, you don't you can't find anything about him. You ask around for a yeah. fellow who looks kind of like yourself and everyone just kind of gives you the stink eye like why has this guy got a skull <laughs> on his face? <laughs> Mm -hmm. So basically, um, in a situation like this, it's easy to be logic about it. Where would a man wait for a friend in a saloon? So I would probably look for something not too shabby, but not too ugly either. Because I forgot to mention in my backstory too that uh, the one thing that Lewis really likes is to look good, despite the skull on the face. Yeah. Uh, but he likes to look good. He has a suit on, so I think that the the he would go around the the neighborhood of the Parisian and stuff. But the Parisian, I uh, does it is it a tavern or is it a brothel? Uh, the the Parisian is definitely a brothel. Okay, well fuck that. There's no uh, there's no uh, meat there. Like it's not a saloon, so probably we would probably go there first because it looks good, and then oh no, and then cross the street. Okay. All right. Well, a as you're walking around the streets of Tombstone, there's a there's a boy. You know, he's like passing out. He's like, Tombstone Epitaph, get your latest news about the dis disappearances. Well, obviously that sounds like something that might be related to why I'm here, so I would get copy. Okay. Um, you got money, right? Not a whole lot, but yes. Well, let's play the game of which monitor is this going to pop up on. The wrong one. Cool. Alright, I, 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 I want to just throw out a number. And I want to make sure... I wanna, I'm want i going to say, like, the newspaper... It's probably a nickel. <sighs> yeah, that's yeah, what I'm like going Probably a, a nickel. Like that. Oh, it wouldn't even be 25 cents. These people are poor. Let's be real here. Yeah, so what's? I'm sorry, but I don't know the language. What's a nickel? One dollar? What? One nickel cent is uh, five cents. Five cents. Five cents. Actually, okay. in this time so, period, it'll be called a half dime. I don't even know what the hell a nickel is. So if you start saying half dime, I'll be even more lost. <laughs> okay, a dime is is Kay. ten cents, and half a dime is five cents. Okay, so if it's a dime, oh, no, if it's a nickel, okay, oh, there you go, I figured it out, okay. So uh, I remove uh, five cents from my money, and I now have an epitaph. And then I'll probably go into the saloon that's right, like, right next to the, the where the child is, and find a place to sit to read. Okay. Um, so the epitaph, the tombstone epitaph, always has weird tales to excite the reader. And its front page is uh, just in, in big bold letters, Trouble in Tombstone. And it's um, it's talking about the disappearances. Um, now, one of the one of the things that catches your eye, you're not illiterate, are you? That'd be that'd be ironic. Nope. 
Okay. I think you start with English, uh, like fluent English, no? Right, but you didn't take the illiterate uh, hindrance? No, no, no. Okay. No, no. So, uh, no, one of the things that catches your eye is the drifter that was the first one to disappear was a Cajun man who came in from Louisiana on the uh, Bayou Vermilion. And that's all the information they have on him. He's unidentified. Hmm. They do have a detailed description of him, and the marshal is asking anyone if they have any, if they can, you know, uh, shed some light on who he was. If anyone knows who this man might be, the marshal would, would, would like to know so he can, you know. And does the description fit friend? Yep. The yeah, description fits Jeremiah oh. pretty soundly. Well, that's not good. Well, in that case, I was gonna take a drink. Since I'm here on Jeremiah's business, uh, might as well go straight and figure out what's happening. So I'm gonna come out of the saloon already, which I'll probably lo lo look like a tenderfoot, but I don't care the crap. And I'm gonna find a marshal of the town. Alright, um, the marshal's office, I believe, yes, 90. he's right here. So it's right down the street. You're, you're on, basically, you're on Allen Street, so you start heading down. Now, um, when you show up, it's kind of like nighttime, so you're not, I'm sh not entirely sure if the marshal doors will be open. So you want to wait until the morning? Well, I'm actually, like, if I see light inside, I'm gonna knock. If I don't see light, then, yeah, no, I'm gonna go rent a room or something. Okay. Just for the sake of moving things along, let's say the marshal yeah. is burning the candle at both ends. So, he, the marshal's office is open. Okay, so, uh, I'll knock on the door. Request audience. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the marshal's office, the door is open, you know, like, it's... You just walk in and you take a seat. Yeah, so it's uh, like a what, basically what a, akins to a waiting room, but it's really not. Basically, as soon as someone walks in, well, the deputy would be like, "Oh, uh, what do you need help with, sir?" Uh, well, uh, I just came into town uh, on a friend's business, and um, I read in the, today's news in the epitaph, and I'm going to show him the epitaph uh, that apparently said friend might be part of your mystery. She. Hey, hey, Marshal! This guy says he knows that drifter. Uh, standing in the, uh, at, or sitting at his desk, really, is a is a man who's kind of, uh, he too has the epitaph, and he's been reading it, and he kind of looks up, and uh, you know, he's got he's got a nice, uh, bleached white shirt, and a a, a, ve a st uh, pinstriped vest, pinstriped pants, and a uh, a short, short lipped hat, which is actually just kind of sitting on the desk in front of him, and he's got patchy gray hair and gray stubble, and he just kind of he goes, ah, and he folds the, tombs the tombstone epitaph, slaps it on the desk, and he says, well, sit down, son. So I'm going to go sit down at this desk, and I'm going to explain to him that uh, I was requested by my friend to come over to this town, he had to discuss business with me. It was important and apparently urgent, however, I came into town uh, finding out through the epitaph that the description of the drifter missing is almost his word for word, so I'm assuming he might be the one missing. Well, that's real unfortunate, sir. Uh, give me the name of your, uh, your friend so I can record it for the records update our uh, missing persons information? Well, if it's him, it's Jeremiah and sorry, Jake, and I forgot the last Jeremiah name. Seek. Jeremiah Seek. Jeremiah Seek. And he, like, pulls pulls out a piece of paper and a pencil and he's writing it down real slow. Is Je Jeremiah, is that with a J or with a G? I believe it would be with a J, however, it's been a long time since I wrote his name. Uh-huh. I don't think it really matters. Jeremiah Seek from Louisiana? Yes. Alrighty then. Um, thank you. I'm sorry that your friends disappeared. Uh, mind if I ask you what business exactly you were, uh, coming here to do? 
Uh, actually, I would like to, to tell you, but the problem is, all I had is uh, an invitation to come see him so we could discuss the matter. So, I really don't know, but if he called me in, and even paid, uh, by the way, even paid for my fare, so that's how important it was. Uh, he, I guess I will know when I find him, which in return I would like to ask you, do you have any information on how it happened or where he went? Uh, not quite. Um, like I said, we didn't even have his name. We just knew he was one of them drifters coming in on the railroad. You mind if I ask you what business you and uh, Mr. Seek do exactly? Uh, Long-term friends, we usually uh, use our reputation to uh, cleanse the, pe the, 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 the spirits of the people. Ra sorry, raise the spirits of the people by uh, banishing evil, evil spirits. Not everybody believes him. He raises an eyebrow. Vanishing uh, spirits. Yeah, it's a it's an old trait of ours. Uh, you know when you you have this, these glum days where things just don't seem to go your way. Well, that would be an evil spirit. An evil spirit and me and Jeremiah are basically artisans in getting rid of those bits so that. Of course, you don't feel glum for the rest of the week, you know? It it clears the, the mind. You know, with your, uh, your face all done up like it is, you don't strike me like a preacher. It's because, like the Christians, which I respect, um, or whatever other religion that exists in this world, we do not seek followers, per se. We just do it on our own goodwill, you know? Just uh, like uh -huh. you don't you don't uphold the law to gain admiration of fans. You uphold the law because you believe in the law, right? Well, that's what it started as. But once you be in Tombstone for a while, you see that the law and everything is cracked up to be. Now, uh, so you, you ain't you ain't you ain't with the church? You're not a man of the cloth? No, not uh, not officially at least. I see. All right. Well, I don't want you doing none of that. Wooju stuff here, so uh, you you keep your business to the outskirts of town. We are God-fearing people here point. in Tombstone. Y you are what? Sorry. God-fearing individuals. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Thank you for the information. Uh huh. All right. Well, uh, yeah. So it's weird. Most people that come through here are looking to head west for that ghost rock in California. I heard about that. What's up with that? Man, you must have crawled out of some backwater rock from Louisiana. Ghost rock. It's the big, it's new gold. Uh, the, the Union and oh, the that it? Confederacy are using it for all kinds of, I don't even know what. But they're paying good money, and so people coming in, tombstones, the obvious stop. A couple of our people here are still holding out for that silver mine, even though it ain't really... Fountain of prosperity. Well, I can figure. Again, as long as you don't do any of your whatever, uh, you'll be you'll do fine here, and uh, you'll be lucky to find uh, rooms outside of brothels. Of course, you can uh, rent a tent, pitch it out, like most people do. But uh, if you have any information, or if, if I hear anything about your, uh, well, what was his name, uh, Mr. Seek, I will uh, send my deputy come come fetch you. Sound good? Uh, yes, but ask you one last question. Sure. Um, th is there any unrelated case that have yet to be solved? Because sometimes they might not look like they're linked, but you never know, like... Somebody spewing crazy shit, or you know, any any sort of unusual activity. Uh huh. All right. Well, um, we've had three disappearances, uh, including your friend Mr. Seek, and that involved the uh, the cat house, the Parisian. Other than mm -hmm. that, uh, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. It's Tombstone, but uh, you know, uh, you just leave that to the uh, to the law, and uh, we'll we'll sort it all out. No need to fret. Uh, 
See, we, we you, deal you here in the real, uh, so there ain't no spirits around. You understand? Oh, no, I'm not talking about spirits, but, uh, I mean, since I will not be practicing my trade, uh, respectfully, sir, uh, do you mind if I at least put my time while I wait for this to happen to maybe help a little? Like, not get in your ways, of course, no, I wouldn't do that to the... Uh, the members of the law, but you know, if I hear anything or if I discuss with the right people, you know. Yeah, I, obviously, if you find any information pertinent to the case, as long as you do it in a legal and orderly fashion, uh, we would take any and all tips, which will help us get to the bottom of these here disappearances. Well, thank you, Marshall. It's been uh, a pleasant thing talking to you, and I hope that we meet again in good. I will now let you rest for the night, and I will find myself a room, a tent, uh -huh. whatever well, I can you, uh, afford. You have a safe stay here in Tombstone, and uh, I hope we get to the bottom of where your friend is at. Surely you will, and uh, this town seems pleasant enough already. Alright, as you make your way out, um, Gwen and Mad Dog, what are you two doing? Last we heard, you guys were at the Golden Eagle Brewery. You still there? Having a chat? Uh, leave that to her. I mean, yeah, no pressure. Ease. <laughs> uh, well, I'll do it like this. Well, since he's helping, I guess we're probably gonna like start investigating and sure. stuff. Um, I mean, I guess we could start. I don't want to say start at the Paris, uh, Parisian, but, you know, it kind of is where everything started at. Right, yeah. Uh, but I figure I, I probably looked it over pretty good and didn't come up with anything, so... Okay. Maybe we should try my friend's house? Or tent? Or whatever she's saying? Well, I'll leave it like this, Gwen. Um, as you know, I like to go around and find a little odd jobs. You know, you, you know, you know what a drifter is. You meet enough of them in this town. Right? So, uh, mm -hmm. I'm more of the drifter who doesn't do a lot of the talking. But, uh, I'll leave that up to you. And at the same time, I'm also easily broke. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, stay with you. And you just tell me, um, I guess when it gets serious or talking, don't get, I don't know, talking go the wrong way. Basically, you just wanna follow me around until I feed you or something. Hey, Jaken, how if much of this that can way. I make out? Uh, pretty much all of it, once you start listening. They're like one table over. You, you have your back to uh, them. The, ha the hand but, is currently between, than... you know, between hands. The, you know, the game is between hands. So you're just kind of cocking yeah. your head to one side and you're listening in. But other than that, Gwen, this is uh, just a job. And once I get this job done and, you know, get my payment... We're gonna leave it at that. Leave it at that after this, okay? I just want to make that clear at this point. So at that point, I'm going to uh, end up out of my seat, trying to be as graceful as possible. I'm gonna turn around abruptly and uh, falls on his face. Yeah, right. Look at both <laughs> of you and tip my hat and say, "Mind if I take a seat? Thank you. Don't mind if I do." And like just kind of sit myself down. And as I do, I'm gonna have my deck of cards in one hand and. I'll like fan them out, snap them together, and kind of spread them across the table and flip them over and see if you guys take the bait of wanting to choose one. And look over and say, I heard you in the, I heard you in the need of a man who can talk, and talking is what I do quite well. Uh, and then I also heard job and money, and those are two things I love as well. You guys looking to hire somebody for some work? I don't know about me, man. Uh, I just found this little lady after I did some other job with her. She's asked me to do this shit. Uh, I'm not sure I'm in too much of a split in the pay, but since she's the one hiring, I'll leave it up to her. I'll motion down towards the cards to, again, encourage you to pick one. I'm not much of a card. And I'll look over at the lady and nod towards her. I'm gonna smile sweetly, of course. Uh, <laughs> so you're a card playing man, are you? Well, let's see, uh, how good you are. And then maybe uh, we can talk business afterwards. Care to place a wager or two? Uh, we could just play for games, drinks. 
How about we start with business first and then we see where pleasure leads. I'll play you for me walking away and you telling me more. Slightly disappointed that, you know, she also did not get work that night. Uh, I assume you yes, took the I night off. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> You're never really off the clock when you're a Sure, prostitute. sure. Just saying. Every, yeah, every, everyone's a, a, a potential client. I get it. The profession of opportunity. Yep. Um, I know. I'm going to look at this and be like, well, you guys can uh, play your cards. I'm going to go ahead and uh, he reaches into his pocket and pulls out a cigar, bites off a piece, and spits it out, and then takes out a match and lights it. I'm going to go outside and smoke this and let you finish your business. I chuckle oh. at someone having to go outside to smoke, but okay. Well, he wants his privacy, obviously. It, it was a joke. Oh, was oh, a my mistake. Jeez. I think it was something you would understand, Gwen. Stick with the batting of the eyes. That worked out better for you. Wow! I'm going, to... <laughs> I'm going to gather up my cards and begin to shuffle them, and then I'll put the deck down and let you split it. I split them. Excellent. I'll put them back together and keep shuffling, and I'll start handing, uh... I'll hand you two cards and me two cards, and... Oh my gosh, there's cards on the screen. All right, oh my so, gosh, are there really? Uh-huh. So <laughs> the yes, way this is going to work is both of you need to make a gambling roll. Yay! Oh, that's I unfortunate. There's actual gambling. You actually have to gamble. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> well, there goes that game. I'm not, I'm not even skilled in this. You're not even skilled in gambling? Oh. <laughs> you made a well, mistake. Well, not for my character's sake, but I can create cards. So, I mean, it's a, it's a little easier Well, make for an me. unskilled check and prepare to get destroyed. Uh, That's gonna be it's my a, one it's good on the top. for the rest it's of the game. It's in skills at the very top. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, hashtag wrecked. <laughs> Apparently all you did was stare at my boobs, so... <laughs> it's a nice pair, man. Alright. Um, interestingly, I'm, I'm reading over the gaming section again, and I, I'm not quite sure how many cards get dealt. I think... I think it's just I think like it's a five. regular game. It could be five. I think it's like a regular game of Texas Hold'em. Okay, and then it's three. I, I was more wanting to play cards theatrically because I wasn't hoping to get busted out of my own bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe she'll uh, she'll look favorably onto you. Okay, so Gwen, you scored a uh, success with three raises, so you get four cards deal uh, four cards to Gwen. Deal. Alright, and then um, Oh, I can steal a card. Five cards get played. I don't know how to do that. Alright, click to draw, uh, you, you, you drag just, to deal. Yeah, you can... Mm -hmm. Can you I can put just it... Like, grab it when it comes up. Yep. Oh, there it goes. Okay. All right, so basically, um, Decker, you're just gonna have to hope that these five cards aren't shit. Well, even if they aren't, then she still gets to use them anyway. Right. So far, it's nothing. Oh wait, it could be a flush. Want want. All right, nope. so uh, Decker, you have nothing. So if Gwen, using the four cards in your hand, if you can make anything, you beat him. Okay, so I just want him. Okay. Do you do you ah. do you need a, um, uh, a, a a guide? Not everyone knows how to play poker. I mean, it's been a while, but I'm pretty sure that's nothing. Well, page one twenty one <laughs> of the uh, player's handbook. Let me, let me ask you right now: Do any of the things you have match the pictures on the things that are on the table? For a shower roll, I mean not shower rolls. For a goldfish on the yes. on the PDF. Three. It's I have three of them matching. GG. Yeah. Or you need to make three a hand of, of matching. Five. Okay. And she has two pair. Yeah, as long as she has one pair, she's... Alright, well, Decker, well, she uh, has you got crushed. Yep, that's the way of the world. So I'm just going to recall... Crush by the puss. Uh, I think you might need to put recall. one pointer to gambling. Yeah, especially if that's going to be your pickup line. <laughs> oh my god! Alright, so Gwen, you beat him. 
And uh, now it's kind of up to you. Do you do you want to do you want to help this guy out and bring him in on the job, or you're just, are you just like, ah, oh, this is sorry sack of shit, and leave him where he is? I'm sorry, I remembered one other picture that I'd found last night. Um, but <sighs> I think that's a man. I guess I'm kind of getting desk at this point. Yeah, it is. It's from Wild Wild West, but I thought I thought that would have been funny. Uh, to use. But anyway, I. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of getting desperate because you know this is my my only kind of friend here. So I'll just uh yeah okay. Um, well, I sure hope that you can help more, or at least better than you play cards. Uh, you see, my friend's gone missing for quite a while now, and uh, some strange happenings have been happening. And I fear, uh. fear maybe she had, yeah, gotten herself into trouble. But the more time it goes by, the less hope I have of ever seeing her again. Sounds like quite a might, mighty uh, righteous quest you're on there. But I have read the papers. I'm sure if we find your missing friend and solve this mystery, there has to be a reward in it somewhere. Uh, so if you can't pay me, I understand. But we have a better chance of solving this together anyway. So I do appreciate you letting me in on it. I mean, I can pay y'all a little bit, but, uh... Like I said, if you make it right by me, if we get a reward, I'll be happy with that. Well, then it's a deal. Excellent. Alright, with that decided, uh, the three of you, together, are gonna go ahead and head over to the Parisian... So that so that the the men folk can get a peek into Missy Kate's room and see if there's any clues. And as they're making their, I just want y'all to remember this. Sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say I hope we all, all remember how selfless I'm being right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So as the three of Two you are heading once. are heading to the Parisian, Lewis, you are also headed towards the Parisian, and you spot Decker, and Decker spots you, and you basically meet. Right in the front of the Parisian on the street. Oh, that guy made it in the hotel. Drawn towards mystery again, I see. I don't know, you seem pretty deep in it already. I actually have very little idea what I'm doing here, uh, other than the pro promise of money and reward. Oh, that's interesting. But yes, I am indeed uh, looking to a certain mystery about this town. Not that there's just one. There's plenty of them, as I heard. One in particular drags me here. I'm going to briefly look over at Mad Dog and then look over at Gwen, because I know Mad Dog does not care. But I'll say, Gwen, this here is a fellow associate, well met on the road. Help me when I was literally at my lowest. Yeah, you can't be lower than the dick. Leading in one at that. His name is Lewis. I kinda Pleasure to meet curtsy. you. Curtsy and Tom. So, Lewis, are you here investigating these missing people as well? Well, one in particular, a man named Jeremiah, at least I believe he's one of the missing people. The description in the epitaph, and I'm going to show the epitaph, is... Uh, pretty strikingly similar and just like me he has a knack for trouble so well, I'm going I to will. cock an eyebrow and look up at you and say there's more than one person like you walking around uh, like me no similar to me yes interesting oh could have sworn you would have been a once in a lifetime encounter I'm gonna hand the epitaph back to you you uh, should visit Louisiana sometimes you would be quite surprised. Ah, I miss the mountains too much to head down to the swamps. It's not only swamps. There's lakes too. <laughs> we call those swamps. <laughs> ten out of ten. But, well, uh... If y'all are done visiting, I believe we were investigating something here. Well, you said you were looking for your friend too? Yeah. Um, I did say that. I was looking for my friend. I'm also looking for my friend. Uh, Missy Kate. She disappeared. 
Missy Kate. She disappeared uh, quite a while ago. When did you say your friend disappeared? I don't know the exact date, but I would probably place it around the same time as yours. Which would be quite a bit of a weird coincidence if you ask me. Uh, just a second, Jagan. Did you say this guy came in earlier and disappeared? Because I know there was. Yeah, so this guy, a drifter. Um, the drifter from New drifter? Orleans, um, uh, you know, paid for a night with Missy Kate and um, he disappeared that night. And the next night, Missy Kate disappeared, along with uh, one Aaron Shine. It wasn't exactly the next night, but, you know, the next disappearance. So, yes. Um, you, you're kind of on track with what he's talking. You're picking up what he's laying down. <laughs> oh! Oh, thinking back now. I think I do remember your friend. Uh, he, in fact, he visited with my friend over here uh, right before he... Finished, but I didn't think nothing of it at the time because he didn't seem like anybody real important. But with everything going on, maybe they're connected. Yeah, it would it wouldn't surprise me, and I'm not insinuating anything, but that my friend would visit your friends. So we should. It it would probably be a boon if we work together on this case. I could help you with your friend, you could help me with mine, and hopefully we can get to the bottom of this before any anything bad happens. Well, not to uh, bring up anything ill while looking for your friend, but uh, you see I've hired help, and uh, we would be just awfully kind if you could also help me hire that help, since we are both doing the same thing. You drive a hard bargain, but I know uh, Decker here is a man, despite sometimes the looks. And who am I to say this with how I look myself, but that's another story for another time. Uh, yeah, no, certainly. If I can help uh, finding these lost souls, then definitely count me in. Alright, and as you guys decide to team up and head into the Parisian, we're going to take a five minute break to use the bathroom and such. So we will come back, sure, back. at 15 after. Nigga, I just want to make sure that you understand that I am asking for help paying these people, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, <laughs> just to understand, OS didn't exactly agree for that, but didn't refuse either. He just 